I recently asked my YouTube community for suggestions on upcoming videos. Two people suggested, maybe more, but these are the ones that I saw in the, the five minutes I glanced back at it. If I would indulge them on my most anticipated movies of 2022, I think that's a great idea. I'm, I'm always eager to see what's gonna come out next in Hollywood, even if it has been a massive disappointment in the last couple years. So special shout out to Armand Sharma and Kyle. Before I jump into this, I should also ask you to subscribe to the channel, Adam Does Movies, as I post content each and every week here for your enjoyment and sometimes disappointment. But either way, I'm trying, mom! Jackass is like a fine wine. It only gets better with age, and I'm hoping that that's the same with the sequel. The stunts will be more over the top, the injuries will be far more grand, because these guys are getting old now. I grew up with Jackass, I, you know, they, they were doing it before anyone else was. These guys were the original TikTokers, the original Viners, the original YouTubers, they were doing this shit on public access. That's hardcore. That's free content. They're not getting anything for that, other than exposure and and the chance to wow people with their hijinks. Running shopping carts into walls, falling off of things. Nothing that took skill, but it took passion and it took dedication. I mean, to injure yourself in the way these guys have by chucking hard objects at your balls. I mean, that's ballsy. That's ballsy. It's funny too, because I barely relate to these guys. I'm so boring and uninteresting compared to them. They're into drinking, throwing tattoos all over their body, gauging shit, jumping off of things, extreme sports. And I'm at home on a Friday night playing Mario Kart after my kids are sleeping and my wife is passed out next to me in bed and it's the only free time I have to myself. I've made some good choices in life. Seeing Johnny Knoxville, seeing Steve-O, seeing Bam, Marger, Marger, Margarine, I don't remember how to say his last name. It's gonna be great. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I like that Taka with Tati is coming back. I don't know how to say his name, so I'm just gonna aggressively pronounce it. Taka Watiti is coming back. He's doing the, he did Thor Ragnarok. I have hopes, I have high hopes, because this guy doesn't let me down. He always does a fantastic job in the writing and directing department in his movies. I mean, if you didn't like Thor Ragnarok, I understand not being excited in the slightest for this. Uh, Natalie Portman's coming back. She was about as exciting as a piece of driftwood in the first two Thor films. They, they wisely axed her and the whole stupid love story. But that's coming back now. She's back in it. And I thought she had no interest, but now that she's Lady Thor, I guess uh, she's willing to pick up the hammer herself. I am putting all of my faith in the script department on this one. I know it's visually gonna look pretty cool. I know the humor is gonna be great. The Guardians of the Galaxy are gonna be in this for a while, probably just an extended cameo, but still, that's better than nothing. I just really hope they can work on this relationship between the two leads. And I think Portman's gonna come out of her shell a little bit in this series. She's gonna have some fun, because I know she's a goddamn great actor. Uh, I saw Black Swan but you can also tell when she has zero interest in the property. I've seen the Star Wars movies too. You're breaking my heart. The last time Guillermo del Toro did a fairy tale, Pan's Labyrinth, I was freaking blown away. My jaw was on the floor. I had to, I had to pick it up after the movie was done. The, the theater crew had to come in and sweep that shit up, hand it back to me. I was in the parking lot, I didn't even realize it. I didn't realize why there was nothing down here. And a, a guy came over, is this done? Are we done with this shtick? Yeah, I think so. Pan's Labyrinth is phenomenal though. Guillermo del Toro does not miss. Although Roma, I think he did Roma. That was not, that movie wasn't for me. I mean, legitimately it wasn't for me. I didn't understand anything about it. The culture's clearly over my head. But hearing that he's working in tandem with another director and an animation company to bring Pinocchio to the big screen again, I'm telling you, this is gonna be one to look out for. The producer of John Wick, the director of Atomic Blonde and Deadpool 2, is bringing us Bullet Train. The plot revolves around said Bullet Train where five assassins all realize they're part of the same project. They, they have the same target. I just, this sounds like a great concept on paper and in execution, I think he's gonna pull it off just based on his track record. Plus you have Brad Pitt in this. You got the kissing booth's Joey King. Oh, that's not a, that's not a plus. You got Deadpool 2, Zazzy Beats. Okay, back on track. You got Aaron Taylor Johnson, shit. We're, we're off the rails again. But then you have America's sweetheart, Sandra Bullock. Okay, here we are, we're on the train. And then you got Bad Bunny. What? Why? 
the fuck is Bad Bunny? Is that a rapper? Is Bad Bunny related to Bad Robot? J.J. Abrams production company? Probably not. Let's, let's keep going. Anyway, I, I'm excited for this, regardless of the kind of random assortment of characters we have. The order of this list means nothing. I'm just sorting shit out, making it easier to digest. Halloween Kills was, I guess, polarizing. People were either in the love it camp or hated camp. I was more in the love it. I, I thought it was good. I, I, I enjoyed it. It definitely was a lot dumber, I thought, than Halloween slash Halloween 2, which is the sequel to Halloween of the same name. Man, this is so bad. Why do they keep doing this? The new Scream movie's called Scream. Stop it. Stop rebranding your sequels as the first ones. It's like the Xbox One. What the hell are we doing in this world? Hopefully Jamie Lee Curtis is back this time and not laid out in a hospital bed for the majority of the picture. Although she did kill him already in Halloween H2O. And she probably killed him in a different one of the past. I, it's hard to keep track of what's going on. H2O I guess isn't canon anymore. Because the the reboot of Halloween, which is the sequel to Halloween called Halloween. <laughs> Bottom line is in Halloween Kills, evil dies tonight. And you don't have to take my word for it. The, the crowd chanted it every five minutes in the last one. Hopefully, hopefully we see that through. We sick of Spider-Man yet? I know I'm not, because we got Into the Spider-Verse part one coming out this year. I'm very excited for this. I'm pumped, baby. That last one, oh, it was so freaking good. Miles Morales introduction. We have all these different Spider-Men coming into the fold. Clearly kind of inspired the new Spider-Man No Way no Way Home to, to bring back some of the old legacy characters. Uh, I, I, I don't know how this one misses, honestly. Although Sony is tied to the production, which can sometimes be troubling. They don't have the best track record of decisions. But I have faith in the writing department. I have faith in these brilliant animators. And I just love me some more Miles Morales. It looks like by the little tease we've had so far, he's the one that's going to be doing the traveling off-world into the multiverse. If they can keep surprising us with the brilliant art style and some of the story beats we might not see coming, I think they're going to have an easy win here. I am very curious why it's called Part 1. Are we doing like a Deathly Hollows thing here where uh, evil Spider-Man Voldemort's going to get access to the elder spider web? And at the end of Part 1, he's just going to go, Evita Kedavra! <laughs> and the, the webs are gonna go up and then we fade to black. I'd be cool with that. Very little is known about Babylon other than the director is Damien Chazelle. I think that's how you, I don't know. I, I'm terrible with names, I butcher them all the time. People, you can try to correct me in the comments. It's not gonna change anything. I'm from Minnesota, I have a little bit of an accent. I'm just kind of an illiterate ass to begin with. So nothing, I'm not gonna learn. I'm not gonna learn from my mistakes. I freaking love this director though. So far, he's three for three in my book of the movies I've seen. I think he's only directed three. Whiplash, fucking amazing. La La Land, blew me away. And I don't like musicals really. I'll, I'll, I'll respect Grease, but I'm not gonna watch it again. And then Flippin' First Man, are you kidding me? That movie made me openly weep in the theaters. I was one of seven people there. Nobody saw First Man. We live in such sad times, don't we? When movies like First Man go, go unnoticed, unappreciated. Oh my God, as a father, if you're a father, I implore you to watch First Man. It will break your heart. If the director I listed isn't doing anything for your swimsuit area and the movies I listed have gone unnoticed so far by you, how about this? We have another Brad Pitt vehicle. Margot Robbie. Dear God, Margot Robbie, my God. Uh, I gotta keep going. Toby Maguire. Oh my God, Toby Maguire. Oh, oh, I gotta keep going. Olivia Wilde. Spike Jones. And a film revolving around classic Hollywood. I think you add those ingredients together, you have a delicious main course. I'm ready to eat. Tom Cruise's mission that he has chosen to accept for the seventh time is to get Mission Impossible out the goddamn door. COVID has been running amok with his productions of both this and of Top Gun 2. Uh, the, the, guy's, the guy's got a handful. He's yelling at people that aren't wearing the masks. He's, he's trying to act, he's trying to produce. The guy's doing it all. Oh, and oh yeah, he's also practicing for a year to get these motorcycle stunts and skydiving stunts off the ground. L literally. Listen, say what you want about Scientology, but if it's wrong, I don't want to be right. 
It's, it's, he must be injecting that Scientology right into his fucking heart. He's like one of the junkies from Arcane. <laughs> If you love the Fast and the Furious movies, get that shit off your TV and go to something more refined. No, not too refined, not James Bond, that's up its own ass. Go to Mission Impossible. That's where it's at. He's killing guys, he's doing his own stunts, he's almost dying all the time, there's hot chicks in the film, they're all so awesome. We don't have time to veer off into social inequality or political injustices. We have shit to jump off. We have people to shoot. We got motorcycles to drive into the air off a ramp. Oh, I'm so excited. And I just can't hide it. Now I don't wanna lose control, but I think I like it. When the first trailer for The Batman came out, I was very underwhelmed. I, I didn't see what the big fuss was about. The internet went crazy. They went hog wild. That's an expression people used to say for some reason. And I just didn't have it. I didn't see it, I didn't get it. But then the second trailer came out. And then I realized, wait, Matt Reeves, that's the guy that did Cloverfield, which I love. That's the guy that did Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, which I freaking loved. That's the guy that did War for the Planet of the Apes, which, it looked nice. And that trailer was so fire, as kids at one point also said for some reason, because it's hot, that's why. That's why. And since then, they've released more promotional material for it. The Riddler looks like a douchebag. The Penguin looks awesome. Catwoman, ooh, Selena Kyle. Ooh. Zoe Kravitz, she's, she's doing it. She's working it just right. She's got that Anne Hathaway. She's got that Michelle Pfeiffer. You know what, every Catwoman, every Catwoman's been great. We, we, we really have been eating well when it comes to the Catwomen. The movie's dark, man, it's grisly. I know we said this in the past, but these movies keep trying to up each other. This has some David Fincher vibes going on, and I'm all for it. David Fincher, one of my favorite directors. Oof, and this is looking like Seven. I didn't see it at first, but now I do. There's some Seven on the wall, and I'm all for it. I was never down on Robert Pattinson playing the character. I always liked him as Cedric. He'll always be my Cedric Diggory. So yeah, having him in the cape and cowl, that was fine with me. I figured he could pull it off, and it really looks like he is. He's got the range, the action looks phenomenal, the CG's looking top notch. I'm all in. For the Batman, I can't wait for it. In the number one spot is Avatar 2, a film that is 13 years in the making. I had to practice doing that little finger thing like five times. Meanwhile, James Cameron is making a goddamn epic. There's countless jokes about Avatar, how it's Smurfs in space, how it's dances with Smurfs. Uh, say what you will, the script is not the most creative. Okay, the story's been done a couple times over. Revolutionary, yeah. Engaging, of course. Gripping, another word I'm using. But after 13 years, is it worth it? Is James Cameron worth it? What did he really do? Besides Aliens, Terminator 2, Judgment Day, The Abyss, Titanic, True Lies, Avatar 1, which has its own theme park and video games and is one of the highest grossing movies of all time. Is he still worth it 13 years later? Always. This isn't a man who's just making a movie. He's making the future, baby. A lot of this is filmed underwater with state-of-the-art cameras that he helped create. We have some of the cast back, Zoe Saldana. Uh, just, just a gorgeous woman, a brilliant actress. I, I love her. I can't wait to see her again as, as that blue Navi creature, that beautiful specimen. We also have that not Matt Damon guy that no one really cares about. What else did he do? I don't know, he's in it. Jake, I think is the character's name. It doesn't matter. He's gonna do what he needs to, to push the story. What James Cameron has built, kids, is a foundation with the first Avatar. You might not see it, but it's there. Rich planet lore. Different characters, different civilizations to be uncovered. And he's going to bring us there, deeper in the depths of the planet in Avatar 2. We'll probably go off world. We'll see different places. We'll explore the galaxy because there's five of these movies as of now, I believe. Five, four or five. This is a saga, this is epic. This is his tour de force, and it will blow you away. Ah, believe you me, it will blow you away. You can naysay, you can judge. They did the same thing for Titanic. Look how that turned out. So yes, the number one movie I am very interested in, if it can make it this year, is Avatar. 
Avatar 2, I can, I'm so excited to see what he brings out. It's going to be a freaking event, people. You have no idea. Maybe you do. Maybe you're nodding with me. It's going to be happening all around you. Your chair will probably sweat and pulsate. The, the, the visuals are going to go inside of your brain. I'm tingly all over thinking about it. Yeah, so there we are. Those are my top 10 most anticipated films of 2022. That doesn't mean there's not more I'm excited about. These are just the ones that... As I did a, a quick glance through the lineup, these ones jumped off the page. Some of them don't have a trailer. Some of them barely even have a plot at this point. But based on the quality of character assigned to it, the actors, the directors, the screenwriters, these are the ones that stood out. Now I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Let me know your most anticipated movies of 2022. Like the video if you had a good time. Subscribe if you haven't. And I hope to see you soon.